Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass <clears throat> in such a way as to hold, last, hold fast even now to those that ever endure through our Lord Jesus Christ, her Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever, ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest forage in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not. Disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Among the nations, idols, is there any that, is there any that gives rain? Or can the mere heavens send showers? Is it not alone, you alone, O Lord? Our God to whom we look, you alone have done these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For, For the, the glory, glory of your name, name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not, uh, re remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Let the prisoner's sighting come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we declare your praise. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. I've been thinking a lot lately. In fact, I'm getting ready to do a, uh, one of my reflections for uh, Let Freedom Ring. And uh, so it's been on my mind a lot. And uh, I've been doing some research about plagues. You know, the word of plague right now. And, uh, but is there a pattern, it seems, that God seems to follow as to why he allows um, the horror of plagues to happen throughout all of salvation history? And th- there seems to be a pattern. And it usually plagues follow this. Uh, widespread idolatry. We could look at the uh, 1918 Spanish flu. Well, what happened in 1917? The Bolshevik Revolution, you know. Uh, the errors of Russia. The errors of Russia are b- basically idolatry, putting man as their own God, and, you know, dispensing with God himself. You know, a horror that, that, uh, that has exploded across the planet in one form or another, okay? Uh, and again, throughout all salvation history, you know, when they're worshiping the, the gods of Baal and all kinds of things. Um, and so I'm looking at our time. And um, I always point first to uh, the uh, uh, Pew Research report that came out in August of last year that, that said, basically, listen, 70% don't believe that's God anymore. Okay? It's just a symbol. Uh, and so, obviously, they've lost sight of God as their God and instead are worshiping other gods, primarily making ourselves our own god, the original sin, right? Uh, you, know, you will become as gods. But then this, this whole idea of, of idol worship seemed to explode at the highest levels in our church. And I found it interesting, too, that um, around that time, that that was becoming acceptable, it seemed. Uh, promoted at the highest levels of, their, of our church, um, we got the warning from Sister uh, Agnes Sisagawa that, um, you know, do the, the Jonah thing, the Nineveh thing, you know, put on ashes and pray a repentant rosary was the message. Uh, that came uh, early in October. Uh, we're finding out, too, as we're trying to sift through all the information, but it seems like the uh, the virus was um, was some kind of accident, very possibly at a viral lab in in Wuhan. When, right at the beginning of October, okay, right around the same time, okay, uh, this was a time when um, we didn't seem to care that nobody believed this was God anymore, right? Worse yet. It was just fine, you know, to to worship pagan gods. Have at it. Go ahead and and uh, and usher in, you know, put into power people that are promoting, may, at least sustaining, that we kill babies in mom's womb. Uh, and you know, I always point to the. You know, go ahead, amen, and share a bathroom with little girls. That's just fine. That's just fine. You know, idol worship or pagan gods inside churches, that's just fine. And we wonder why 
God has allowed a plague to enter our planet. You know, what, what happens then usually through plagues? Is the people get off their high horse, right? That expression, knocked off your high horse, like St. Paul. The great um, persecutor killer of Christians went on to write upwards to a third of the New Testament. A great saint of ours. But his high horse was knowing better than God and trying his best to rid the planet. He was part of that whole force to rid the planet of any talk of a savior. In other words, Christians must be removed. Isn't that what's going on right now? The persecution is heating up. Statues, burning of churches. It's already at epidemic proportions in places like France and Africa. uh, I heard in China that they're to remove crosses and statues and put up pictures of Mao and others. But what brings the alleviation of the sufferings? When people do what Sister Agnes of Sisagawa, or Sister Agnes Sisagawa of Akita, was told to do. Put on ashes, pray, repent, and rosary. Do what we do every Lent. When we enter into that season on Ash Wednesday, I don't know if, if we have to physically put on ashes, but the idea is what? That we humble ourselves before God. We do the Nineveh thing. Forty days more. They sat in ashes. They repented. Now this, this is the cure for every plague. plague as you look throughout salvation history. We place God in front of us. Instead of some place in the low priority list over here that we might get to if we find time you know after we prioritize everything else in our lives let everything else be more of a god than god is in our lives you know and 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 again let's get back to evangelization you know uh, and here here's where i believe where we find the greatest fault in us as a church is over the last call it 50 plus years this new kind of Catholicism Christianity came in what is it it's uh, go ahead and stamp yourself the stamp of approval as a Catholic but go ahead and be- behave and believe in everything the world teaches that horrifies God in other words yeah, I'm Catholic. I even go to church on Sunday. Confession maybe once or twice a year. Uh, but, you know, but it's okay because God is merciful. So I can put into power people who are promoting the destruction of the nuclear family, are killing babies in our mother's wombs, okay? And now... Uh, trying to normalize things like pedophilia. I mean, it's horrific. And, and, and we can't be bothered. We can't be bothered. So what was the first Christian? Why did they explode onto the scene? I'll tell you why. They were being killed. What's so attractive about that? Well, what's so attractive about... A soldier that goes out out of the battle, that's deployed overseas and put in harm's way. What's so attractive about that? They're heroes. Heroic Christianity needs to be seen. That's what attracts people. Not this watered down, do whatever you feel like. You know, it's like it's like the Catholic Church is the worst parent in the world. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. You know, do your rainbow flag and you know, go ahead and 
promote abortion, put people in a power that promote abortion. You know, I, we just want you, we just want everybody to get along. You know, parents are like that. They, they, they want to be liked more than they want to help their children to become virtuous, strong, charitable human beings. Charitable meaning agape kind of love. A total emptying of self for the other. Including babies in the womb. we got to care about that. So where is Christianity burgeoning while all around it places are being closed? Well, this do whatever you want, believe whatever you want... My truth is not your truth. Your truth is not mine. And it seems nobody's truth is God's. Those are collapsing. Because who who wants to be a part of that? It might be fun. They might have a good band. You know, very entertaining. Okay, that lasts for a little while. Then uh, sleeping in on a Sunday feels better, you know. I might miss a, a good show today. You know, but I'd rather sleep in, right? I mean, what's the impetus other than that? But places are burgeoning. Places that are attractive, like the first Christians were attractive, are those who accept and are called to be heroic in their faith. I've become more and more convinced We have a plague because of our idolatry and its cure is our humility. Please stand. United our voices together as one, let us lift our prayers to God for the church as it comes forth as it carries forth its mission to build God's kingdom, may Christ the sower guide its holy work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for those who hunger from hung, for those who suffer from hunger and thirst, may God's mercy and compassion show forth through the generosity of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who tend to the land so as to yield abundant fruit, may God's presence be with them as they provide for all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed away from this life, may God draw them to himself for eternal rest. And today's Mass is offered for Jordan Haley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we bring our prayers before you and ask that you hear and answer them in your great mercy through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of the Jesus. 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts. And through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who hold the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious seventh Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, Jonathan, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and prove this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual, acceptable, so may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, 
and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command these gifts to be borne by the hands of your holy angel, Gerald Khan High, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, and mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to suffer the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I remember you as if I embrace you, as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, the divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>